Today, the two most powerful countries in the world are, of course, the US and China. However, this has not always been the case. Throughout human history, many countries have experienced peaks and declines. One of the oldest countries, Egypt, experienced many falls and rises. The most significant achievement of the 16th century BC was made by Pharaoh Amos I, from whom the reign of the new kingdom of Egypt began. In the following centuries, the territory of the state expanded. Egypt managed to conquer Palestine, Syria, and Phoenicia. Egypt successfully confronted both the barbarian tribes and the new threat from the northeast, the Hittites. The effectiveness of the army was due to a clear and strict hierarchy. The domestication of horses made possible the creation of a new weapon of war, a chariot with two horsemen, that gave Egypt a substantial advantage in combat. The use of a long-range bow with arrows, the purpose of which was to exhaust the forces of the rival before close combat, was becoming widespread. The main weapon of close combat became the Kopesh sword. The form allowed both to cut the enemy and to inflict stab wounds. Armor cast from bronze became very popular, and bronze spear tips became common throughout Egypt. Ships were used extensively as a means of transport for soldiers. Impeccable for their time, wooden ships ensured Egypt's glory as a powerful maritime state. In the middle of the 6th century BC, the descendant of Achaemenid dynasty King Cyrus II conquers the city of Ecbatana and declares himself the ruler of Medea. In the following years, Babylon, Lydia, and Thrace will fall. The conquered lands raised revolts that the ruler immediately suppressed. Cyrus' legacy allowed his successors to continue his business. The country also conquers Eastern Asian lands and breaks into Greece. This required a crossing across the Dardanelles. In 480 BC, the army of Xerxes I destroys the army of the Spartan king Leonidas I in the Battle of Thermopylae. At various times, the Persian army reached enormous numbers of up to 700,000 soldiers. Alexander the Great did the impossible he defeated the army of the Persian Empire at the Battle of Gaugamela. As a result, the army of Darius III ceased to exist, and Persia submitted to the Macedonian king. For 10 years, the Macedonian troops captured all the territories belonging to the Persian Empire. Eventually, Alexander was crowned as Pharaoh of Egypt and founded the city of Alexandria. After the completion of the campaigns in 323 BC, he declared the city of Babylon as the capital of his empire. Despite any adverse conditions, the Macedonian army was never defeated. The phenomenon consisted of an excellent battle tactic. Depending on the circumstances and the type of enemy troops, different units could go into battle, infantry, phalanx, or cavalry. The king's skill was in the ability to combine forces wisely. The main striking force, the phalanx, had to conduct a long battle. It was supported by cavalry, and the latter in turn was supported by infantry with spears or arrows. Military maneuvers were also necessary. During the battle, the Macedonian king could move one part of the troops in another direction, and communication support was provided by a staff of adjutants who gave orders to commanders promptly. In the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, there were wars between the remnants of Macedonia and Rome for the rule of the Balkans. They ended with the complete liquidation of the Macedonian Empire and the beginning of the flourishing of Rome. Incredibly, it was Rome which was able to defeat the legendary Macedonian phalanx, as well as the army of Carthage led by the legendary General Hannibal. All this is the result not only of new weapons and armor, but also of reorganization of the army, discipline, and tactics. Rome drew attention to the organization of the rear and supplies, the army was an occupation with high prestige. The poor could not get into the ranks of the legionnaires. At the time of Julius Caesar, each legion of three to 4,000 men included 55 ballista, which were an innovation of its time. The tactics were also supplemented with different combinations. Legionnaires began to use the Tetsudo formation to defend against sieges. The economy was also actively developing, agriculture, crafts, and trade. Positive changes in just a century will lead a small Roman Republic to the size of a great and powerful empire. In the 30s of the first century BC, even the mighty Egypt would become the province of Rome. And already in the second century, Rome would acquire the peak of power. It would control all of Western Europe.
as well as the Middle East and Africa. Eventually, the Roman Empire was divided, and on the basis of its eastern part, Byzantium was created, which received rich provinces. However, the country was at war with barbaric tribes. The situation improved with the arrival of Emperor Justinian to power. Thanks to him, the empire expanded and gained control of territories in Europe and Africa in the mid-6th century. Also, the fleet acquired significant importance. The invention of Greek fire has become an incredible threat to the rival ships. The Byzantine army could be defeated on shore, but their fleet was unbeatable at sea. The influence of Byzantium also occurred in the world of religion. In the middle of the 9th century, there was a split of the Christian church into Orthodoxy and Catholicism. In the 10th century, there was an aggravation of relations with a new political player, Kivan Rus, which gained political strength in Europe. Under the ruler Igor of Kiev, there was a march on Sargrad, which ended in an unconditional victory of Byzantium. Over time, however, countries have begun to trade actively. After a few decades, the influence of Byzantium led to the baptism of pagan ruler Volodymyr I Zvyatoslavich the Great and the acceptance by Rus of the religion of Byzantium, Christianity. Also, Rus borrowed from Byzantium legislative norms. Criminal law was created. Close cooperation with Byzantium allowed Kievan Rus to continue the extension of its borders up to the middle 11th century. Although the consequences were not felt for 200 years, in the late 12th and early 13th centuries, Khan Temujin, better known as Genghis Khan, united scattered Mongol tribes, created the Mongol Empire, and became its emperor. Over the next 20 years, he conquered large areas of Asia and the Middle East. The nomadic army used bows and arrows on a large scale, covering the enemy until it began to retreat. The remnants of the enemy army were captured and destroyed with axes, spears, and swords. In addition to direct combat, the Mongols actively used sabotage, sending their spies to spread false rumors and panic. Genghis Khan instituted iron discipline. The death penalty awaited all those who had retreated without orders or who hadn't entered the battle in time. A wise commander understood the importance of logistics Intendants were appointed to supply the troops with provisions and weapons. Horse couriers were widely used to deliver mail. Genghis Khan became the greatest conqueror in the world, and his fortune makes him the richest man in history. Genghis Khan's successors expanded the empire. In the second half of the 13th century, Kublai Khan conquered the territories of China, Korea, and Vietnam. Moreover, using the new junk ships, he began his march on Japan, which was interrupted by a powerful storm. During its heyday, the territory reached an unprecedented 33 million kilometers, with a population of over 100 million at that time. This makes the Mongol Empire the second empire in history. In different administrative divisions, the Mongols ruled Eurasia unilaterally by the middle of the 15th century. During this period, the Ottoman Empire gained power. Sultan of the Ottoman Empire Mehmed II the Conqueror invaded Byzantium and captured Constantinople. The fleet played an important role in the occupation of Constantinople. The expansion of the zones of influence and control over the Bosporus and the Dardanelles allowed the Ottomans to prosper. An administrative system was being established, a government that controls the collection of resources for military and civilian purposes. The main striking force was the cavalry, Firearms appeared in the army. In addition to the guns, the Ottomans began to actively use artillery. Cannons with cannonballs on the armament of Ottomans have made a real breakthrough. They allowed to effectively storm fortresses. Each successive ruler only expanded the territory of a powerful state. Sultan Selim I added the territory of Egypt and Persia. The biggest peak of conquests falls on Suleiman the Magnificent. In the 20s of the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire conquered Hungary, which led to conflict with the Habsburgs for the next three centuries. In the first half of the 16th century, Charles V of the Habsburg family became King of Spain and Holy Roman Emperor. With his 40-year reign, a genuine colonial policy would begin. Spanish conquistadors Hernán Cortés and Francisco Pizarro captured the territory of modern Mexico through the conquest of the Incas and Aztecs. 
Even small battalions with cavalry and firearms were able to conquer entire cities of less developed opponents. During the reign of Charles V, Spain became a powerful player in the world arena, becoming the first transatlantic empire. The fleet reached unprecedented proportions and became the most powerful in the world in the 16th and 17th centuries. In addition to the technical advantage, the Spanish army used a new method in military strategy. It attracted the enemies of its enemy to cooperation. From the New World to Spain goes an enormous amount of gold and silver, enriching the empire. Together with the fleet, the scale of the slave trade increased. After Charles' death, militancy, and with it, the territory of the country, only increased. After the death of the Portuguese monarch, Spain joined Portugal as a result of the Iberian Union. However, the abundance of gold and silver exported from the colonies led to inflation in the country. Despite this, the country continued to expand its overseas territories for two more centuries. While Europe was dividing the lands of the Americas, a new, powerful country emerged in Asia. China formed the Qing Dynasty with Beijing as its capital. Qing eliminated the Ming Dynasty, which ruled China after the Mongol Dynasty was overthrown. The period of the Qing Dynasty is known for its harsh and aggressive wars in Asia. In the second half of the 17th century, the Qing general Zheng Chenggong defeated the Dutch and captured its colony of Taiwan. As a result of the war against the Tsardom of Rus, he gained the Amur River region, Manchuria, suppressed the Southern Rebellion, and absorbed the Zungar Khanate. At the peak of its power, the population was 400 million people, which was rather unbelievable at that time. The agricultural industry acquired unprecedented scale. The country maintained a closed policy, but sold silk, tea, and porcelain to Europe. This would lead to the most undesirable political conflict in the country. The largest nation in the history of mankind is by far the British Empire. The Kingdom of England was the beginning of a powerful empire. It began its expansion in the late 16th century. For 200 years, the influence and the number of captured territories grew many times. Although in the 70s of the 18th century, the United States declared war and became independent, it hadn't prevented the British Empire from developing new lands. The territories of Canada, Australia, India, and other countries were evenly captured. In the first half of the 19th century, as a result of the trade conflict between Britain and Qing, an opium war ensued. The British Empire, with its army of 20,000, inflicted a crushing defeat on the Qing dynasty, which had a number of soldiers that was 10 times bigger. The obtaining of Hong Kong and the expansion of the British Empire's influence in China was the result of that victory. The massive distribution of opium from British-controlled India became a revolutionary method of control. Over 100 million Chinese became addicted, undermining Qing's future position. The British Empire also distinguished itself by banning slavery. At the height of its power, this empire controlled almost a quarter of the world's territory, with a population of more than 400 million people. Simultaneously with Britain and Spain, France tried to pursue a colonial policy, but lost ground to the British Empire. The country was doomed to remain an overseer, but it also had its peak of power. The French Revolution brought Napoleon Bonaparte to power. The young commander was given a weak, disengaged, and incompetent army. In a short period of time, he used his iron hand to clean it up, shooting down the intendants who were stealing from the treasury. He forbade generals to physically beat soldiers, which was normalized in the armies of the time. He provided the army with clothing and weapon samples. Not only ethnic French were involved in the army from that time. The logistics of the artillery acquired a new dimension. Private companies, which had previously made a huge fortune on government orders to transport guns and ammunition, were no longer associated with the army. The emperor's reforms had both a material and a significant mental impact on the soldiers, boosting their morale. As a result, in the early 19th century, the army of Napoleon's France became a formidable rival. At its peak, the army included more than 500,000 soldiers. Despite the fact that the country conquered the smallest territories of all the states mentioned, one-on-one, -on -one, the French army has become invincible. Only coalitions could confront the new threat in Europe. 
Bonaparte's actions cannot be measured by the number of battles he won. During the Napoleonic period, France exerted considerable influence in Europe. The impact was so great that the Emperor of France intervened in the internal feuds of the Habsburgs, Europe's most famous rulers. Not surprisingly, even 200 years later, Napoleon is still considered to be the most influential figure in Europe of the 19th century. The next major conflict in Europe was called the Franco-Prussian War. Napoleon's nephew, Napoleon III, would be defeated. France would lose Alsace and Lorraine, and the scattered German principalities led by the Kingdom of Prussia would form a powerful new player in the political field, the German Empire, led by William I. During this war, the German army used advanced technology at the time, the anti-aircraft gun created by a company Krupp, which could fire on the incredible by that time 3.5 kilometers. Victory over France would give Europe its greatest period of peace in 43 years. It would be the German Empire that would start the most bloody and destructive war of that time, World War I. As a result of the global economic crisis, six million people were unemployed in Germany. After all, in the 1930s, a new state emerged in Germany, the Third Reich, led by A. Hitler. Offended by the disgraceful defeat in the First World War, the dictator seeks revenge on Europe. The Führer united a planned and free economy, overcoming unemployment and ensuring economic recovery. In a few years, the country has significantly increased its military machine to unprecedented heights. The Reich united with Austria and captures the Sudetenland of the Czech Republic. As a result, in September 1939, the country occupied Poland completely. The Third Reich was certainly at its peak of militarism, sharpening a new form of war. The Blitzkrieg, lightning fast war. Tank groups took on unprecedented proportions. Commanders with many years of experience in command of troops effectively used tank wedges for rapid advancement. The German Air Force was also a formidable rival, providing support for ground forces. The Navy blocked the sea roads. The peak was reached by sinking enemy submarines, including American ones carrying military equipment to the Allies. A new strategy of war was also received by the infantry, who had learned to effectively undermine the basis of ground defense on the lines of the pillboxes, long-term defense points. The use of the Stug III assault artillery, which shot down the embrasures of the pillboxes, and the use of flamethrowers allowed the Wehrmacht army to attack effectively and capture city after city. The German military intelligence service for the Reichswehr and the Wehrmacht Abwehr and sabotage groups had become increasingly professional. Over the next two years, the Third Reich has taken over many European countries. On 22 June 1941, the Reich invaded the Soviet Union and occupied much of its territory. But the peak did not last long. The German Reich was waging war on the Second Front, with Britain in Africa for the British colonies. And just two years after the attack on the USSR, the Reich's closest ally, Italy, led by Mussolini, would emerge from the war and leave the Reich one-on-one -on -one against Britain and its ally, the US, in Africa. Another year later, the Third Reich began to experience a lack of resources. The British bombed the German cities of Hamburg and Dresden. And the following year, when the regular military almost ran out and the battle for Germany began, Reich ordered the arming of civilians into Volkssturm units, including children from Hitler Youth. This was the beginning of a rather shameful defeat. <laughs>